uh, now as sujit already told me uh, told uh, has given introduction i think anesthesiologists are special children of god who have capacity to challenge the challenges and uh, even you get a challenge at 11th moment you should accept it because challengers are what makes life interesting and overcoming them is what makes life more meaningful with this positive note today we are going to discuss very interesting topic about pacemaker and anesthesia in last century the most useful intervention that saved the maximum lives in century are as follows first is in invention of oral rehydration therapy and antibiotic second is anesthesia and intubation which has saved millions of life and which have helped millions of people to overcome their diseases and third is the pacemaker these are very novel inventions that have happened in last century which helped the man as far as pacemaker is concerned it was in very primitive state some scientists thought that there was heart was suddenly stopped and accidentally he stimulated that heart with electric uh, uh, electronic uh, gadgets and he found that her heart was contracting he repeated this on various animals and finally in 1950 this kind of pacemaker was born or invented it was a huge a machine it has to be carry along with that uh, person if it, uh, that person is placed with the pacemaker later on modifications occurred battery was improved then this external pacemaker took this shape but still it was big when it around 60 1960 this small compact pacemaker was uh, developed and later on you know it develops or uh, it improved by lips and bounds now we are at a stage where lidless pacemaker is available we just you have to implant in the heart and in very near future we will have a pacemaker which will uh, regenerate or repower itself with the activities of the heart and it will be a very small chip that can be uh, manipulated or maneuvered from outside such is the uh, such rapidly this science of pacemaker has been developed so what are the indications of uh, putting permanent pacemaker the most common i am i will not categorize uh, this but in general if you want to say the six sinus syndrome means uh, sinus node is not working properly you, uh, you need to put a pacemaker when there are atrioventricular blocks like complete heart block or high degree we blocks when bradycardia which is symptomatic patient is feeling giddiness patient has got angina his cardiac output is not maintaining these are the indications when actually pacemaker is pace, uh, it's put in a any person concept of pacemaker is very simple there is a one pulse generator there are leads that are put into the chambers when it is a monopolar or a single uh, chamber pacemaker it is put in right ventricle when bi chamber or uh, dual chamber pacemaker it, two leads are placed in two different chamber and they uh, this uh, pulse generator will uh, uh, will manipulate or will give the contraction and the heart will contract according to the uh, stimulus from this electrodes now this pacemaker has got some nomenclature concept what does it means means suppose we put a vvi pacemaker means the first letter in this indicates the chamber paced the second letter indicates chamber sense and third letter indicate a sense response whether it is inhibitory or stimulatory now how it is useful suppose you paced uh, heart in a ventricle it is and it is sensing auto activity of the heart but if activity goes down at that time only it will be activated in this way this sense response is very very important it saves the battery and it, it increases the life of pulse generator 
now further this uh, north american society of pacemaker and electrophysiology and british uh, pacemaker and electrophysiological society added these two letters means as this uh, science of pacemaker uh, improved over a period of time we can make it a multi programmable how why this is needed suppose when we put a pacemaker in one person with a fixed heart rate of 70 and now he has got a fever or he has to walk slight little fast can this pacemaker increase his uh, heart rate yes this function we added with letter 4 and in letter 5 anti arrhythmic function has been added we now can put a uh, artificial implantable cardiac defibrillator into the there are electrodes into the pacemaker leads which can give shock or cardiac resynchronization therapy can be given with a pacemaker so this fifth letter is antiarrhythmic function and resynchronization therapy now pacemaker uh, mainly we put more 80% of the pacemaker are put for bradycardia support uh, these are relatively cheap, but when you want higher yes. level of function compared like rate responsiveness, cardiac resynchronization therapy or defibrillator, you need a uh, better quality or more sophisticated pacemaker which cost, uh, which cost more. Now, what is the scenario in India? In recent survey from India, Shenthar has uh, reported that around 37,000 cardiac devices implantation take place in India, in India annually. Such is the problem. Means in even day-to-day -day practice, we will face and we are facing patients with permanent pacemaker for non-cardiac surgery. And out of this, 80% are bradycardia-related pacemaker implantation and 10% are ICD or cardiac resynchronization device pacemaker insertion. Now, suppose this patient came to us for any other surgery, non-cardiac surgery. Now, how, as an anesthesiologist, how I can evaluate or how I can deal with this? So, first, I have we have to evaluate the pacemaker. Why this pacemaker was inserted into the patient, and what was the what is the heart rate uh, that which pacemaker has been set? Is it on a fixed heart rate or is it on a demand mode? What is the location and how much is the duration? Duration is important because you want to assess the battery life of the patient and type and make of the patient. Why this is needed? I'm going to tell you in detail. And this all information you will get, uh, get whenever you go through these old papers or his discharge card or whatever the company usually provides some papers to this patient uh, of pacemaker, uh, inserted pacemaker. You can, above all, you also must seek cardiologist opinion about the functioning of pacemaker. Roughly 8 to 10 years is the battery life of pacemaker. So you must uh, evaluate history or you must ask history and you must consider this point whenever you are uh, taking history of pacemaker patient when he is subjected for non-cardiac uh, surgery. Now, our uh, pre-op anesthesia evaluation not restricted to only pacemaker. Associated comorbidities are very common in these patients with permanent pacemaker. It is said that 50% of this patient will have a coronary artery disease. Almost 20 to 30% of this patient will have a hypertension and diabetics. One must ask patient history of dizziness, syncope, presence of uh, cough, dyspnea on exertion, because this may indirectly uh, refer or is, uh, indicates that pacemaker may, uh, is not functioning properly. One must uh, uh, religiously take baseline heart rate that of patient and check that yeah. is the pacemaker as placed at the same heart rate. One must ask for effort tolerance. Always do basic investigations, ECG, X-ray, electrolytes and echocardiogram. If you see the ECG of such patient, you will see the pacemaker spike. In this lower ECG, this is a single chamber pacemaker. If you see this spike followed by QRS complex, means pacemaker is stimulating the heart or stimulating the contraction. In this above ECG, this is a dual chamber pacemaker. 
after atrial contraction there is a some lag time and after that there is a ventricular contraction this is a synchronized dolchemic pacemaker which usually put to maintain the adequacy of cardiac output what must take a x ray sorry x ray should be of deep penetrating view what do you mean by deep penetrating view when spine is visible through the heart we call it as a deep penetrating view why this is needed because we want to see the potency of this electrode this leads this is a pulse generator and these are the leads one is placed in atrial chamber one is placed in the usually it is placed in atrial appendage and uh, ventricular lead is placed in the apex of the ventricle now as newer and newer pacemakers are developed they also can be visible or we can guess from x ray how see this second x ray these are the additional marking you can see on a leads these are nothing but the electro uh, these are the special electrodes to give the shock so this is not a simple pacemaker but it is a aicd artificially uh, it is a cardioverter defibrillator if you see this x ray of the pacemaker along with these two leads there is one additional coronary sinus lead means this pacemaker is for cardiac resynchronization therapy this patient must be of a dilated cardiomyopathy and that is why this uh, resynchronization coronary sinus lead has been inserted if you see this x ray this again additional electrodes are seen means this cardiac resynchronization plus additional defibrillatory function is also present such is the sophistication and that you can easily see with the x ray now as far as anesthesia is management is concerned there are basically you one rule is very important always disable all programmable part because all this sophisticated program which are depend on so many inputs from heart and during anesthesia with the use of cautery even shivering or so many parameters which can give a false sense uh, to false sensing to the uh, pacemaker so disable all programmable part of the pacemaker then put pacemaker on a synchronous fixed heart rate mode what do you mean by a synchronous fixed heart rate mode means pacemaker with pace the heart at certain fixed heart rate irrespective of the condition of the heart irrespective of the sensing from the heart this mode uh, usually even uh, if you are well you are worked in cardiac you also can put patient on a synchronous fixed heart rate otherwise you must call company uh, person and take help of him to put patient on a synchronous fixed heart rate mode no anesthesia management is concerned all these cases must be done at tertiary or equivalent care hospital where pacing facility where cath lab is available monitoring com ecg monitoring pulse oximetry and nibp monitoring is must why we need to monitor ecg even arterial pressure monitoring is also required whenever there is a sick patient or Uh, surgery major supra major surgery does because we want to monitor two function one is electrical function of the heart and second is mechanical function of the heart electrical function of the heart will be managed with the ecg but mechanical function of the heart means actual contraction or actual cardiac output is occurring or not that has to be monitored with the help of plethysmograph of the spo2 or arterial pressure waveform analysis for that you require to monitor the patient with this then you should put uh, your ecg machine on pacing mode so that it will detect the pacing uh, automatically as far as central venous axis is concerned you have to be very careful because usually while putting central vein there can be arrhythmia first and secondly you may displace the lead which is placed through the same path so you should be very careful when you are taking a central axis central venous axis to the patient of pacemaker even removing central line is also very uh, can prove to be disastrous so you should be very careful whenever you are accessing central venous axis to the pacemaker patient defibrillators must be kept ready with external pads and one must have 
this facility whenever you are giving anesthesia to the pacemaker that is either transvenous pacing facility or external pacing transcutaneous pacing facility nowadays there are so many defibrillators are coming with a transcutaneous pacing facility you just have to put the two leads like this and start current current obviously current requirement is more because current has to travel from the skin up to the heart maybe 70 milli ampere or 80 milli ampere current is required and uh, that much current is required to pace the heart but it is let me tell you this is a very very important facility and uh, one must have in the ot because many a times in emergency patient is convulsing you don't uh, have access for the iv line it is easy not easy to take a central venous access because of low cardiac output patient is convulsing there is severe bradycardia in this certain situation to tide over the crisis external transcutaneous pacing is a uh, very important a great boon in this situation so this facility if you have in your ot it's a great help in emergency situation now anesthesia as far as anesthesia management is concerned always keep ready certain drugs like isoprenaline adrenaline as you know isoprenaline is beta 1 beta 2 stimulant it can increase the heart rate uh, uh, ventricular rate you have to give it through infusion only disadvantage is it can cause a precipitous hypotension so one has to be very careful in titrating the dosage of isoprenaline as far as cautery is concerned the recommendation is you should use a bipolar cautery if at all you have want to use monopolar cautery cautery plate should be near